I really love getting to do comedy. It's taught me so many different things. Uh, like, I think that it's been interesting growing up with white parents because it's taught me that we are all so much the same. And my parents, when they used to go to the city of Atlanta, they were always afraid that a black person was gonna rob them. And I'm like, mom, who are the biggest crooks in America right now? It's probably the CEOs of banks and CEOs. They're robbing from everybody. Do you remember back in 2008, the housing crisis? And, and I told them, do you realize how much money they're stealing from everybody? They're stealing, think about this, future money. Money people haven't even made yet. Why do kids not care? They're too young because it's not cool. So we need to make these people, you know, the bad guys in, in Batman movies, then maybe people would understand. CEO of Bank of America comes out and he's just like, I've placed a small plastic card in the wallet of every citizen of Gotham. They may now make purchases they can't afford. I'm gonna liquidate assets and help bail them out. It will not work. They will pay off one, but they will get another. Enticed by the sweet reward of 5% cash back for every dollar they spend at their favorite mid-level dining establishment like the Cheesecake Factory. Why would you give them money back? Because they must be made to believe they can pay off their bills. Without that hope, they'll never truly know despair. I really love getting to do comedy, though. It, it, I don't mean to, to get all political. I don't want to divide everybody. I want to bring everybody together, because really, I got into comedy because I'm lonely. Uh, <laughs> like, sometimes I don't get to do a lot of things. On Sunday nights, I will just draw an X on my hand and permanent marker and half wash it off, so people think I did something awesome on Saturday night. <laughs> I've been known to go driving out and just let people merge in traffic so they'll wave at me. <laughs> I think it's because I got a lot of anxiety. I don't know, it was weird growing up. My mom has this way of saying things. It's not always the best way. I turned 30 a few years ago and I went to my mom because in my head, I was like, oh, this is a big birthday. I'm never gonna be young again. I'm 30 now and my mama says this, she goes, Jamie, they didn't keep real good records at the orphanage in Korea. You might have turned 30 a while ago. <laughs> I was like, you could have said that the other way, right? But I've been confused. I'll tell you, the first thing I ever wanted to do when I was young, I wanted to grow up and be a cowboy. I wanted to be a bull rider. And so when I was 18, I actually found a rodeo in Van Wert, Ohio that would let anybody with $200 get on a bull. So I, I went to Walmart and bought a hat because I don't know where cowboys shop. Uh, <laughs> purchased everything that said Wrangler on it and I showed up and they put me on the bull in the chute and then my hat, it wasn't sized very well, right? Because it was cheap, started falling down in the front of my head. I just adjusted it back. Now, if you're not familiar with the sport of bull riding, this is the signal to open the chute. So I adjusted my hat and then I woke up on the other side of the arena. It was terrible. I've tried so many different things. I really, I started a band recently and we have not uh, played anywhere. It's called Gibsland. It's named after the place that Bonnie and Clyde were killed. Because I think that's a fitting name for my band. <laughs> no, that's a little too judgmentally over there. No, I'm just kidding. I confuse people a lot of times because I'm from Boston originally. That's where I've lived most of my life. And I actually did this when I signed up to be in the military, I went to the recruiters and I accidentally signed up as a North Korean, which, <laughs> by the way, is the wrong answer if you don't know geography. But I was 18 years old and I thought they were gonna say, are you from North or South Korea? And that's not what they asked. They asked the, the political names, which is the Republic of Korea or the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. 
Now, like any other high school student, I saw that word democratic and I was like, ah, oh, that must be us. That's the good guys, right? It sounds like a good word. It was not. I went home and my dad was like, you should change that answer. <laughs> and so I called them up the next day and I was like, hey guys, I have to adjust that answer from where I'm from. But uh, does that not prove that I am a loyal American, that I don't know the difference between both of them? <laughs> I pride myself on being an Asian comedian that does not do a lot of Asian jokes, but I think I'll tell one more uh, just for you, sir. Only for you. Okay, so listen very closely. Uh, I'm not going to tell it right now. I'll tell it later, and it'll sneak up on you like a ninja. Okay. Uh, that's... <laughs> I don't like being a controversial comedian because I think life is so tense right now. Comedy should just bring us all together. But I do want to say, I do want to say, I don't think we should be teaching evolution in the public school system. Now before, before you think I'm going to split the audience, hear me out. It's not that I have a position either way, I just think there's more important things we should be focusing on than the theory of whether, uh, I don't know, creationism versus evolution. Because we as Americans have a hard time reading, writing, and doing math, and that's like three of the most important things to getting a job. Let's focus on the things that, that help people get jobs and be productive citizens, right? Because I've worked food service and nobody said, excuse me, sir, is this steak made from cow that comes from God or cow that evolved from dinosaurs? Because I don't, like, no, they just asked me for my change. And also, <laughs> also, I don't even believe in evolution. Here's why, right? Uh, if we actually believed in evolution, if we supported the idea of survival of the fittest, would we make accommodations for people with peanut allergies? I'm not saying it makes you a bad person if you're allergic to peanuts, no, I'm sorry. But I'm just saying my dog has learned to eat peanuts without dying. <laughs> he can't eat chocolate, but that's because he's racist. And uh, no, 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 don't. Don't sit up on that, that is just a dumb joke. All right, my dog's not racist. My dog even, he's so unracist, he went black once. And you know the saying, when a dog goes black, take him off the grill, he's done. Surprise, that's, that's my Asian joke, I don't. <laughs> I'll tell you, it, we're, we're going through strange times. I think every generation goes through strange times. But whenever I'm feeling a lot of anxiety and worried about the future, what I try to do is I try to help other people. And so recently, I started volunteering, this is totally true, at a shelter in Georgia uh, for, for homeless women. And what I do is I mentor their kids after school while the moms go to job training and emotional counseling so they can break the cycle of homelessness. Now what I do is I try to help the kids with their schoolwork after school, but I'm not very good at it because I don't have kids myself. And one time, one of the kids was like, Mr. Uh, where are you from? <laughs> now I get very excited. I'm like, we're about to have a learning opportunity. I'm gonna teach him that not all Asian people are from China. And before I could say anything, he goes, are you from Texas? <laughs> Now, people have guessed a lot of things with me, but nobody's ever said Texas before. <laughs> At first I'm thinking, maybe he just feels like he knows I want to be a cowboy, right? <laughs> and I was feeling very proud until I thought of it for one more second, and then I thought, oh, he just thinks I'm Mexican. <laughs> I asked him why Texas, and he actually had the sweetest answer ever. He goes, well, mister, you're wearing cowboy boots. I was wearing boots that day. He goes, and I'm from Texas, and everybody in Texas wears cowboy boots, so I thought maybe you were from the same place that I was from. And I thought that was the world's greatest answer, this little kid. He didn't judge me on, on my race or my gender or anything that I can't control. He just did the one and only thing that we should do, and that is judge people on their poor fashion choices, right? <laughs> you can do that, you're allowed to do that. <laughs> 